Hello and very good evening viewers. I am Mahbub Sheikh from Face to Face 2360 TV. Uh, I am here at the Royal Canadian Military Institute RCMI where we have our honorable guest Major General Lloyd Holliston, Commander of First Canadian Air Division, Canadian NORAD Region. It's really very honored to me. It's nice to meet you as well. Thank I like you. your pens. Oh, very really? And again, yeah. I like your jacket. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Canadian Air Force regarding you. I, I believe, unfortunately, I think we're standing in front of an army display, but it's very pertinent to uh, service overall. I mean, these are medals. This, this room is called the Metal Room. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, there are some, uh, the, the medals of some Air Force officers over on that wall. Okay. Here in the Canadian Victoria Cross. Okay. Uh, this is our, uh, our the, the most senior of our medals mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, individuals currently can, uh, can be awarded. But, uh, but further from that, you have some examples, for example, General Reimer, uh, General uh, Reimer's uh, uh, medals are right here. You can see uh, Lieutenant General uh, Romer, sorry, uh, Lieutenant General Richard Romer uh, was a pilot in World War II. It's just, it's, it's nice for a military uh, professional to be in a room like this to, uh, to celebrate uh, the past. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of success uh, stories here, but there's also a lot of the sacrifice and service as well. Thank you so much. So we're now we're going to do the start of our interview. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Now we are starting our NORAD is the North American Aerospace Defense Command. So thank you so much, Major General Huddleston, for taking the time to speak with me and for this great opportunity. Thanks for having me. Because I would like to share something about Major General Huddleston. He was selected in 2015 to attend in the Royal Canadian College of Defence Studies in the London, UK and returned to Canada in 2016 to become a director of uh, flight residence on 1st Canadian Division headquarters in Winnipeg, Manitoba. In June 2018, he was promoted to Brigadier General and served as a 1st Canadian Air Division Deputy Commander for gen, uh, Generation and then he has Deputy Commander posted on the air staff in Ottawa in June 2020. He became the Director General Air and Space uh, Redlines and upon to promoting Major General in May 2021, he was appointed as a Chief Staff for the Canadian Joint Operation Command Headquarters. In July 2022, uh, General, uh, Major General Huddleston assumed uh, command of uh, 1st Canadian Air Division in Winnipeg. Uh, Major General, can you please uh, explain briefly what is the NORAD and his mission? With, in collaboration uh, with the United States mm -hmm. to defend the airspace of, uh, of North America, we have three specific missions, aerospace warning, aerospace control, and maritime warning. Mm -hmm. But effectively what that boils down to is, is providing security uh, to the airspace over mm -hmm. North America mm -hmm. in collaboration with our U.S. partners. So how do you accomplish uh, NORAD goals? Well, in a very collaborative way, as I said, we have a binational command. There are three uh, regions, one in Alaska, one in the United States, and one in Canada. And with uh, and in each location, there are American and Canadian officers and NCMs, non-commissioned members, who are working to uh, defend this country and uh, and execute the mission of Colorado. Uh, I'm sorry, of uh, NORAD. Mm -hmm. The headquarters for NORAD is located in Colorado Springs, mm -hmm. again down in the United States. And at that location, we also have a paired team of Canadians and Americans protecting this continent. What challenges have you faced uh, during this long journey of your career? The main challenges probably uh, have to do with our. Uh, you know, our moves, we move around quite a bit, so there's a lot of uproot, up, uprooting of the family. I think when I was younger, that wasn't really a challenge. I loved traveling and I uh, dedicated myself to it. Mm -hmm. But more uh, later in life, I think with a family, it's a little, it becomes a little harder moving mm -hmm. around the country, but, uh, but I enjoy it. I, I enjoy giving those experiences to my children, living in new parts of our country. I'm probably uh, not unique, but I certainly have had a background that allowed me to see the whole of the country and experience all of the all of the wonderful people and uh, and uh, provinces that we have. So, mm -hmm. from my perspective, incredible. Mm -hmm. But I don't actually have a hometown. So, Major, did you face uh, any any kind of threat during your appointment in Kandahar, especially in Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. So, I'm an Air Force officer. I was uh, the planner for the base uh, during a period in Kandahar 
where the um, the U.S. was investing mm -hmm. in uh, some of the infrastructure there. So I was part of that effort. Uh, separate from that, I used to visit Afghanistan with General Hillier. I was mm -hmm. his aide de camp, mm -hmm. so I I coordinated his travel. But I visited Afghanistan uh, during the period of 2007 to 2008 a number of times, and then subsequently I was the CEO of the of our strategic transport squadron on the Globemaster, the mm -hmm. C-17 Globemaster. So I did transport missions mm -hmm. to Kandahar and back, either transporting troops or transporting equipment. Uh, to Kandahar and back to Canada. We're always concerned about the possible threats, mm -hmm. but uh, and we prepare for them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I did not, during my my uh, my uh, travels there, receive direct threats. Mm -hmm. Of course, when I was with General Hillier, we did go out uh, on the ground in vehicles uh, into the Panjway. Uh, but yes, no, I never I never faced a direct threat uh, such as such as those faced by our soldiers. Uh, what step uh, should young people like uh, if? they would like to join the Canadian Air Force of the Canadian Army? There are a number of different paths to join mm -hmm. the Canadian Armed Forces, but certainly doing well in high school um, and going to the recruiting center and expressing interest, those mm -hmm. are the first key steps. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to us to, uh, to uh, as best we can, recruit those individuals, bring them in, train them. There are a number of locations around the country where that training occurs, mm -hmm. and then assign them to a trade and assign them to a portion of our force. Canada is the multicultural and diverse society with people of the different uh, races, ethnics, backgrounds, and culture. So what message would you like to send out the Canadian population? We're very motivated to diversify the uh, Royal Canadian Air Force. We're working hard on uh, trying to make the Air Force attractive to all. Uh, and we're having some success. Uh, I don't reflect uh, a diversity, uh, the diversity of our nation, uh, but uh, we do have many members of the RCAF who join us and, uh, and find great careers across our country. And frankly, they get to enjoy the same experience that I've enjoyed through my childhood and through my service. We're happy to have every Canadian uh, from every background serve. Um, and we're motivated to do better in this space every day. Sir, thank you so much once again for giving me this honor and opportunity to conduct an interview with you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's such a great honor to me and my TV channel. Give me the feedback after this episode. How did you program this program?